Our guest says the broad US market is not yet overvalued, but it's getting stretched. And now is the time for investors to look out for some contrarian calls. We are joined by David Sequeira, Chief US Market Strategist at Morningstar. David, it's great to see you. So the market, it doesn't look bloated in terms of valuations yet. Exactly. At this point, it's now trading a couple percent, you know, above our fair value estimate, but not into the point where you know we're going to call it overvalued. But as you mentioned, it does really start like it's feeling getting the, you know stretched at this point in time. So I think. Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off at all. Um, you you say broadly speaking, the so-called value stocks uh, do look mm -hmm. cheaper. Yeah, they're trading at about a 10% discount to a combination of the fair values of the stocks that we cover. So that is the area that we think investors you know, should be overweight right now. And to pay for that overweight, I would actually now look to underweight growth stocks. Those are now trading above our fair values. And then by capitalization, I also like small cap stocks here. And I think in order to overweight that, now's a good time to be taking some profit in a lot of these you know, large cap tech stocks that have just really run up to levels that they're just getting to be overvalued and overextended at this point. You would suggest that investors look out for ideas in real estate, utilities, and mm -hmm. energy. Um, why real estate? I mean, obviously, real estate has the cloud yeah. of commercial real estate, office blocks hanging over it. Well, and I think just backing up a little bit, you know, really to outperform in the second half of the year, yeah, I think you're going to have to start moving more into contrarian calls. So the tech sector overall, while it was, you know, certainly undervalued coming into the year in 2023, you know, six of the Mag 7 were rated four and five stars. You know, those stocks now have moved up enough that, you know, only Alphabet remains uh, undervalued at this point. You know, three of the others are now fully valued and three are getting to be overvalued. So that's why I think you need to look for, you know, Know, these stocks at this point that have become, you know, have underperformed, are unloved, and still undervalued by the marketplace. And those are the three sectors that I've, you know, found to be, you know, fit those characteristics the most. You know, the real estate, the utilities, and the energy space. Um, do you have an idea for a, an individual stock in real estate? Anything leap to mind? Yeah, so there's a couple of different ways I think you can play real estate today. So first, you know, looking for some deep value candidates, especially those with defensive characteristics. Uh, so one I really like is in the healthcare space. That's uh, Ventas. It's a five-star rated stock. Trades at a 40% discount to our fair value. Pays a pretty decent dividend yield at 4.2%. Another way to play it would be uh, defensive characteristics, but then correlated to interest rates. Our U.S. economics team does expect interest rates to decline you know, across the yield curve over the rest of this year. That's going to be realty income. And then lastly, one of the most hated sectors is going to be a multifamily. Mm -hmm. I know our team recently sharpened their pencil there. Yeah, our pick is going to be Avalon Bay. So Ventas, um, I believe Ventas Realty is VTR. Oh, yep, yeah, we're looking mm -hmm. at it right now. And that's interesting. So Avalon Bay, you say investors have turned cool on multi multifamily uh, real estate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially you know the apartments. We've seen you know, a lot of pressure you know in that area. You know specifically like when New York Bank failed and Signature Bank you know had failed. You know a lot of the reason there was you know they were taking a lot of losses you know in their portfolio. But I note specifically for New York Community Bank, you know the multifamily losses they were taking were very specific to New York. So our real estate team you know did take a look at Avalon Bay, and in fact all of our multifamily REIT exposure you know sharpened their pencils. And they do think that Avalon Bay is probably best position and has the best management team. Give us an idea in energy, if you would. Mm -hmm. So a couple of different ways to play that. You know, as far as the global majors, uh, Exxon is our pick there. It's a four-star rated stock, trades at a 15% discount, still paying you know, a pretty decent yield at 3.6%. Uh, of those you know, who might be looking for more of a regional player, we like Devon Energy. That trades at a 26% discount to our fair value. And then lastly, one which is a catalyst-driven play is going to be APA. That trades at half of our fair value at this point. It's a five-star rated stock. Kind of the synopsis here is we don't think the market is giving them any credit right now for a joint venture that they have with Total mm -hmm. uh, regarding a new play in Suriname. We think that if they move forward with production you know, in that area, that could double this company's production over the course of the next decade. That's interesting. APA, I'm not sure if we have the ticker symbol um, uh, based in Houston, where else? Um, not a huge oil company, market cap of about $9 billion. And, and that's interesting, Suriname. We hear a lot about Guyana. Mm -hmm. 
but Suriname is under investors' radar, you, you reckon? That's what we think, and again, that's why that's one of our contrarian plays here. And in fact, when we look at our valuations, you know, even if they don't move ahead, you know, with the production there, we still think that this stock is, you know, at least trading at fair value, if not still below fair value. And finally, Snowflake. I think you have cut your fair yeah. value. Uh, obviously, news not great at Snowflake. Mm -hmm. um, earnings and turmoil in the executive suite. Um, is that stock, does it have prospects of recovery anytime soon? Probably not anytime soon, and I'll I'll admit, you know, this was really disappointing, you know, when that news came out. In fact, you know, we were originally recommending that stock, you know, October of last year when I think it was still trading around $150 a share. You know, we thought it would actually be a pretty good second derivative play on artificial intelligence. Stock actually did really well, you know, traded up, but we saw a big retreat today. Yeah, you know, I don't know where it closed, but I know it was down, you know, anywhere from 18, you know, to 20 percent. Yeah, you know, we did cut our fair value pretty significantly down to $187. A share, and it's just a messy situation, you know, right now. And thinking about it fundamentally, you know, both revenue and margin guidance did come in below our projections. You know, they are replacing the CEO. So I think the question really is going to be at this point: you know, Are they just lowering guidance in order to really kind of kitchen sink this quarter, mm -hmm. just to make it easier for management to outperform going forward, or is this really more indicative of deteriorating underlying fundamentals? And I think the latter is really what our analyst team is thinking at this point.